Hi, it's Gwen Fox, and I'm glad you're here. I know I say that every week, but I'm really glad you're here. Now, today's video is going to be one of those videos that won't be uh, the most popular video, but it may be the most important video that you'll see. It won't be popular for the simple reason that it's not a demo. And let's face it, we as artists love to look at demos. We like to know how to paint what we're going to paint. But this isn't about that, because as the majority of you know, I am an art coach. I love what I do, and I'm really good at it. And I love the people that I, the artists that I coach and they're doing well. Why are they doing well? Well, it, one of the reasons is because I taught them exactly what I learned that changed my artistic career. I've had many things to change it, but this was a big one and I'm going to share it with you right now. You know, there's the old adage, uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words could never harm me. I believe that that's false. Words can harm you. Words can, they can form your world. Because how you describe anything, you describe it in words. And it is nothing until you've described it. So my question to you is how do you describe yourself uh, as an artist? Now, and let's take a particular situation when things aren't going well. And we all know what that is. You've killed a painting. I just killed one, by the way. Uh, and uh, you overworked it. And it makes it very difficult to get it back, if you can, because that, that inner being, that inner glow is gone. Or, you know, how do you, how do you talk about your art when this happens? Or how do you talk about yourself as an artist when this happens? Now, if you're like me before, I would say, well, if you were a really good artist, number one, you'd know what to do. Number two, you wouldn't get in this situation. Real artists don't do this. They know how to get out of it, and you don't. And then you look at the painting, and you think, well, the painting is, that looks like shit. I can't show that. Well, no, you can't, because it's not successful. So what do you do? What do you say to yourself? How do you describe yourself? How do you describe your art? How do you describe yourself as an artist? Because I can tell you that this is how people see you as an artist, because this is how you're describing your world. When I was taking workshops, I took my first workshop two months shy of my 50th birthday. I loved every workshop that I took. They were so exciting, and I learned so much. But every one, after about two weeks, I felt there was something missing, and I did not know what it was. And, it, and I kept thinking, there is something more to this. But the other artists didn't seem to be bothered, and I thought, well, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I've got to find this missing link. Now, if I'd had a name for it, it would certainly helped. But I didn't. The instructors all talked about the how to paint, how to mix colors, how to do this. This is important. Knowing the elements and the principles of design, it is important. But the other is equally, if not more important, is how you think as an artist. The mind, the creativity connection is there, but it's there if you're aware of it. And changing your words is merely a habit. It's merely a changing a habit and being aware of, of how, what you say. I'm not asking you to be Pollyanna. I'm just saying be aware and stop when you're saying negative things. Because guess what? Negative, uh, negative thoughts kill creativity. Totally kill it. So I was trying to find exactly what I needed. And I, and I, as I say, if I'd known what I needed, it would have helped in the, in the search. But when I finally found it, I realized that that was the success of not only artists. It was the success of uh, athletes. It was the success of, of everybody that was a very successful person. What was that? Remember I said I was a coach? 
This is something that every single artist that I coach mentions that they lack. What is it? Confidence. People love to be with people who are confident. Let's face it. Because confidence is lacking in a lot of people in what they do. So how do you get confidence? Confidence is earned. What do I mean by that? It means that you put yourself out there. You have the courage to enter the show. You get in, it builds your confidence. You enter another show, you get an award. That's another earned confidence. But confidence is a muscle. It's a muscle that needs to be used all the time in order to become strong. And so using this muscle will help develop this feeling and the feeling goes out into the world. Sounds simple? Well, when I finally discovered this, I, entered, I decided when I was teaching, I would share this. For some, it was okay to some and not to others. That was okay. But it wasn't until I was teaching at the Taos Institute of Art, and I explained to the students, you know, every morning we have a talk. Uh, it's, a, it's a motivational type talk on art. But on Friday, we will not have that talk because we're getting ready for their final painting. So I come in on Friday and there they are. They're in a semicircle. They're sitting there. I said, hey guys, did you forget? We don't have the talk today. And they said, we come for the talks. Music to my ears. Because I knew then that others needed what I had needed and that I wasn't alone. And then when I started coaching, I realized, oh my gosh, this is so needed by so many. So give it a try. It'll change how you look at yourself, how you present yourself, how you present your art, and it'll change your life. It's a habit. It's easy to change, but you have to be aware. So there is more to art than the principles and the elements and the how to do things. Your confidence makes up for a lot. I love you. Next week, there'll be a demo. I hope you've enjoyed it, put it to use, and it's a guarantee that it will change how you look at yourself and it'll change your art. Love you. Bye.